All right, in this video, we're going to learn about how to use breadboards to build circuits, we'll learn about some breadboard basics, about resistor basics, then we'll learn how to wire a series of parallel and um, a combined circuit using a breadboard, how to measure voltage with a multimeter um, using a breadboard, and how to measure current with a multimeter on a breadboard. And also, I'll show you a link to another video where I go over the same things, but um, in real life with an actual breadboard and some wires. So first, our breadboard. The reason we use them is that they help us make neater circuits. They allow us to connect wires in an easier fashion. They allow us for a more efficient use of space. We can make smaller circuits, make the same complexity, but in a smaller area. And they also give us less of a chance of shorting things out or of wires touching other wires um, in the wrong way, destroying our circuits. So what you see here is a breadboard. And a breadboard really just consists of a kind of... Um, little plastic thing that has metal in the bottom of it and it has a bunch of pre-made connections. So all these little dots allow you to plug wires into them, or these little kind of holes allow you to plug wires into them and a bunch of pre-made connections are already made below them. So a couple rules. So on the outside of our breadboard, so outside is referring to this section here and this section over here. The ones in this case, they have blue and red lines. Your breadboards might have these blue and red lines. Some of them might just have um, not be colored at all. But really, you can tell there usually is a little kind of a gap here and here that separates the outside of the breadboard from the interior of the breadboard. So these are the rules for the outside. And they're pretty simple. So every hole in a column, so any hole vertically on the outside, is already pre-connected to every other hole. It doesn't matter if there's a space here in between them at all. But every single hole on the outside, on on like on every column on the outside, two areas there, is connected to every other hole that's in the same column. So this means that anything um, that's in any of the holes in the far left is connected to every other thing in that same column. So here, the this blue column here, and this red column here, everything in that blue column and everything in that red column are connected to everything else in that blue column, and everything else in that red column, and the same is true over here. Now. This blue column is not connected to that blue column, but they're connected to everything. So basically these five plus these five plus these five plus these five plus those five are, are all connected to each other already. So what it means is that if you want to connect two wires and you plug a wire into one of these spots and you plug another wire into another spot that's in the same column, those wires, even though they look like they're far apart, they're actually touching each other because there's already a pre-made connection underneath them that connects those things together. And we usually use these to hook up power supplies or to hook up things you're going to hook up multiple other components to because it gives you a lot of spots to connect new things. On the inside, we have a similar rule except for it's a little bit different. So on the inside, it's not the columns that are connected to each other, but it's the rows that are connected to each other. So on the interior, which is in this space here of our breadboard, the and then this is a little bit different because there's a divide here in the middle. So Everything in a row on each side of the divide is connected to everything else in that row on the each, side, each side of the divide. And this means that anything connected to a hole is connected to everything else that's on that side of the divide that's also in that row. So for example here, everything in row 5, A, B, C, D, and E are connected to each other, but they're not connected to um, F, G, H, I, and J in row 5 on the other side, or on the right side of the divide, everything in row 9 like F, G, H, I, and J, the blue ones are all connected to each other as well. So again, this is usually where we connect um, more individual components or smaller components that only need a connection or two or how we connect components to each other, either in series or in parallel. But it does give us five connection points. All right, the second part is resistors. Now, resistors are components that have a constant resistance. Most of the ones we're going to use are, are we can consider them ohmic resistors, so that their resistance remains constant. Um, but they're often also very small, and now you could probably have machines that could print numbers and stuff on them, but when they were first made, it was really hard to do that, so we developed a color coding system to allow us to read these very small resistors when we couldn't actually read any writing on them. And the system is fairly straightforward, it just is a little bit confusing in the beginning. So here is our kind of resistor color code over here. And the way that it works is the first two colors on your resistor, and we'll see your resistor in a second, the first two colors give you a numerical value. So for example, if you had brown and yellow, your numerical value would be 1, 4, or 14. 
So all the first two colors are going to give you a two digit number that is represents your resistor. And then the last color or the third color usually is going to give you a multiplier. And by putting those numeric value and the multiplier together, that will tell you the value of your resistor. Um, now there is a last color as well. It's usually going to be silver or gold. And that's just, so that's going to be the fourth color. And that's going to give you the tolerance of your resistor, which just means how, um, how good, how good quality your resistor is, how close it is to the actual number, because you all have a little bit of a variation. So all we're going to really use the last number for, or the fourth value for, is to tell us which side is the right. So we're going to read it from left to right. We look at our resistor. We put the gold or silver side to the far right and then kind of forget about it. And then we read across. The first two colors give us our number. The third color gives us our multiplier. Now, for example, here we have a couple of resistors. This first one, we put our gold to the right over there. We have our three colors. Our first color is yellow. Our second color is purple. Our third color is brown. So remember, the first two give us our number. So the first two would be, I look on my sheet, let's see yellow is a four, purple is a seven, 47, brown times 10. There's a multiplier. So 47 times 10 gives us a value of 470 ohms. For the second one, we have brown, we have black, and we have orange. Again, we look on our list, brown, black. Brown is zero, black is, or brown is one, black is 10, or zero. Put them together to get a 10. And then this time our multiplier is orange. So that is times 1K or 1,000. And we put that together, 10 times 1,000 gives us 10,000 ohms, which means this resistor is a 10,000 ohm resistor. And the resistors you're going to have in your kit, um, they should be similar to this. They, again, you might have a few different resistor values because we ran out of them all when I tried to give all of you a kit. So the ones you should have, you should have a blue, gray, brown, which is a 68 ohm resistor. You should have uh, one or two brown, black, browns, which are 100 ohms. And again, you might have two or three of these. You might have brown, green, brown, which is a 150 ohm resistor. You might have red, red, brown, which is 220 ohms. And you might have a yellow, purple, brown, which is 470 ohms. Now, there also, I think there might be some 200s in there. Um, there might be some other values in there as well. But this should be close set. This should have a variation that runs about from 68 to 470 at the maximum and other numbers in between. So the first you might want to do is when you get to, when you start your lab is take out your resistors, sort them, figure out, find, kind of find them, put them in a little pack. So when you go and build your circuits, you know which ones to use. All right. So now we're going to jump to a second video where we talk about how you can build your circuits using a breadboard and what they might look like when you, um, when you build them using breadboards and resistors. And then also how we can use our multimeter with our breadboard to measure the current and measure the voltage in our circuit. And then I'm going to throw a link at the end, uh, probably in the description of this, that goes to a second video where I kind of work out under a video, under a camera, building these circuits using a breadboard so you can kind of see what they really look like in real life. All right, so you're going to build three different circuits and then change them a little bit in your lab. You're going to build a parallel circuit. You're going to build a circuit with three resistors in series, and you're going to build a circuit with three resistors where it's in a combined state where there's two in parallel that are in series with another one. So let's see how we hook it up. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to hook up our, you're going to, to hook up your battery. And what I usually do is hook up the battery to one of these um, kind of long column sides. Now, if you have a, a breadboard like this, you can hook one side of your battery up to the blue side and one side to the red side. Oh, and by the way, the color of your wires don't matter. They're just there to help you remember where things are. So you have a bunch of different color wires. Color doesn't matter. So I might hook it up this way where I hook again one of the one of the sides of my battery to um, this red column and one side to the blue column because we might hook up more, multiple things to the battery. Um, some of your breadboards might only have one column on the outsides. If they only have one column, that's fine. Just hook up one of your battery sides to the column on the right and one of them to the column on the left. So either way is perfectly fine. And really, if you do it this way, it doesn't really matter. You have four columns and this one you can use. All you really need is two, one for each side of the battery. So that's how we start. And again, sometimes it helps to put these at the very top as well, just to get them out of the way. But again, it doesn't really, I'm gonna actually rotate this a little bit to be a little bit neater. 
using my digital wires. So let's say we start like that. All right, now I want to build my circuit. So I have three resistors here. I just happen to grab these. Um, yours are not going to be the same ones as these, but yours are probably going to be mixed and different. And I want to put these in parallel. Remember, we said parallel means they're all connected to the same spot. That's what it means to be in parallel. So I'm going to plug these in, and I just want to make sure I plug in each end of my resistors to um, the same or the same row of dots on the same side. So if I start and plug this one in, let's say here, and if you notice, let's see, it's going from row 8 to row, looks like 17. If I want to put my other ones in parallel, I just want to make sure they're somewhere in row 8 to row 17. So I can put one there, and I can put one over there, let's say. And again, I can I don't have to put them right next. I could put this one like right next to it, but maybe it's too close. You want a little more room, so I can move it over, and I'll put it there. As long as they go from rows, they start the same row. In this case, I think it's 8, and end the same row, 17. They're going to be in parallel. All right, so my three resistors are in parallel, but they're not connected to my battery. So now I want to make a connection from my battery to my resistors, and then from my resistors back to the other side of my battery. And remember, I plug my battery in here. I don't need to um, shoot a wire all the way from my resistor back to my battery. I can use the fact that every single dot here that is in, or every single hole that's in this column is connected to each other. So I'm going to use this jumper wire, and I'm going to go from one side of my battery. And now I just want to make sure I go to the same member. When I'm inside, the, the rows are the same. So I'm going to go from my battery to this row. So I can do anything in row 17 works. So I'm going to jump to this second thing here, to 17, looks like 17B. So now if I kind of follow the path of this, I'm going to come in. Uh, let's use, sure. Use that. I'm going to come in and go from, oops, I don't know why it's not working. Switch the mouse. Come in and come over here and go to here. And then I'm going to, now it's connected here. It's going to go through all my resistors. Now that battery is hooked up to all three of my resistors. And now I just have to connect it to connect my resistors to the other side of the battery. So I'm going to use my jumper wire again, my other, a different jumper wire, hook one side to row eight, and then bring it over and connect it to anything in this column, the far right column over here. Again, I can put it anywhere. Whatever makes it look clean, whatever's easy to plug it in. Maybe I'll plug it in right there. And now this will go back to there. Everything in this column is connected, so it connects to that. And now I got my loop that goes back to my battery. And I have my loop where it comes out of the battery, goes through all three resistors, and then goes back to my battery. So there's me wiring my circuit in parallel. In series, again, I'm going to connect my battery the same way. So I have them connected this time. I'm going to use the two comms on the left because I already have it drawn that way. So I'm going to um, connect the member in series. It means they're in line with each other, where one end of your resistor connects to the other end of the other resistor. Or that basically you want the same current is going to go through them all. So let's wire them. So I'm going to put the first resistor, let's say, put it right up here. Now I want my next resistor. I want one end to start where this one ends, and then it can go wherever it wants to. So I'll go from there to there. And then my next resistor, I want to do the same thing. I want to start it where this, the one I just put in ends, and then go to wherever it goes to. So let's say something like that. And now if I follow these, I'm going from here to here. These are together, so that those are already connected here to here. These two ends are connected, and then I can go down to here, and these are connected kind of one after the other in series. Again, they're not going to work yet because they're not connected to the battery, so my, the next thing I want to do is I want to use some jumpers. That's why I call these wires, and jump them from my battery to one end of the of this series circuit, and then from my battery to the other end of the battery to the other end. So let's see, I'll put one that goes from this red column. To, and now I'm going for the red, anything in the red column is connected to that red wire. And I'm going to put it, it can be anywhere in this row. Let's say I'll put it right there. Then use my other cable. Again, anything in this row at the bottom. Let's say I put it over this one this time. And I want to go now to this blue column over there. And now if we trace that path, we're going to come out of the battery. 
Remember, this is all connected, jumps us to here, all these, everything in the row is connected. We go through our circuit. The end of our circuit here is connected to everything else in that row, goes back to the green wire, connected to this blue column, and now that's connected to everything else in the blue column, which is that wire, and then we're back and we have our loop that goes through our battery. So there is our three resistors in series. And if you want for our combined circuit, it's going to look something like this. Or again, we have one that looks like it's in series, and the two other ones are in series with it, but they're in parallel with each other. And again, if we just trace this one really quick, we come out of the battery. That's connected to that green one. That's connected to the end of that. Goes through that. Now we get here. Kind of the current can divide up. Goes through both of those. They come back together at the end. In the same row as this green one comes back out to the blue column and then back out through the blue wire and we got our circuit there all right there's building our three circuits the last thing we want to talk about is how can we measure um, current and resistant or current and voltage in these circuits so let's go back to our parallel one um, let's see if i can erase this yellow stuff really quick all right so how do we measure um, voltage and current voltage is easy so we have our meter over here and again you're going to set your voltage your uh, multimeter um, when, we, when i show you the real one you'll you can see what what um values you're going to use but you're going to set it to one of the voltages it's a little bit hard to see here but in this one the voltages are right here you can highlight them the three uh i think they're over there yeah the three steady state voltages are right there so you're going to probably pick the 20 volt one it depends again depends on what meter you have to measure voltage set that to the to that and remember voltage is measured across two points in the circuits all you have to do is take your meter and it should have little pointy things on the end of this probes and you're going to touch them to the two points you want to measure so if you want to measure the voltage across one of these resistors you can just bring this touch it to one end of the resistor bring the other side again touch it to the metal part not to the plastic part touch it to the other metal part of the resistor I don't know why it's jumping to that, but there you go. And that's going to tell you the voltage across that resistor. And if you want to measure it across another one, you just bring it, touch it to that side, touch it to that side, and that's going to tell you the voltage across that resistor. Now, if you go to the series one, we'll see it's, this one's a little more interesting. Let's get rid of the yellow. Again, if I want to measure, let's just rotate this so we can see a little better. I want to measure the voltage. I would just click it up so I can say, oh, what's the voltage across this resistor? Take my two probes, touch them to the two ends of that, and that would give me the voltage across that. Put it on the other side. That would give me the voltage across that resistor. And whatever, and you can take the voltage across whatever you want. Now, the other, so voltage is pretty easy to measure. You can just set it to voltage and then put the probes on whatever two things you want to measure the voltage across. But remember, the voltage measures across something, so you want to put it on either side of whatever element you're measuring the voltage across. Measuring the current is where it gets a little bit tricky. That's where you can also damage the machine, so you got to be really careful and make sure you wire it correctly. So to measure the current, um, there's a simple little thing you can remember, and you'll never make a mistake. Remember, current, you want to measure the current through a wire or through something in your system. So whatever you want to measure the current through, you need to remove parts of your thing. You need to, you need, remember, a voltage meter, you measure across something. So you kind of add it to the circuit in parallel. And it has a pretty big, or we used to say it has an infinite resistance, so it's not going to mess up the circuit. A current meter, though, has no resistance or very low resistance, and you want to put it in your circuit because you want to measure the current flowing through it or wherever part of your circuit you want to measure the current. You want to put your meter in into the circuit there. So what you're going to do is whatever you want to measure the current, you just disconnect one end of that wire. So let's say I want to measure the current coming out of the battery. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the battery, just one end of it. So I would disconnect that, pull it out of the little pinhole. And then I would hook one side of my current meter to the wire I took out and put the other side of my current meter. I want to put it in that hole, but it's too big to go in the hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a jumper cable. 
So wherever I unplugged my, um, whenever I unplugged, I'm gonna plug a, just a loose cable into that exact same spot. So I'm gonna plug a loose cable into there. And I'm gonna connect my current meter to the other side to that loose cable. So I'm gonna go through that one more time because this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So here's my original circuit. I built it, it worked. I measured my, actually that was on the red one. I measured my voltages, I'm all happy with that. Now I wanna measure the current that goes through this circuit. I'm gonna disconnect this. And you can actually, you could like disconnect the green one too. It doesn't really matter. That's the same, comp, it's like the same continuation of a wire. But I'll, let's say I'll disconnect this one. So I'm gonna disc, actually I would, I'm gonna disconnect the green one because the battery's wires are kind of small and they're a little bit annoying to play with. I would keep those plugged in if you can. So I'm gonna disconnect this green one. Oops. Disconnect the green one. Put in my little jumper wire where I disconnected it. So I'm putting that purple wire in where I disconnect at the exact same spot I disconnected the green one. And then now I have two loose ends. I have right here and this one, and I'm gonna connect my current meter up to those two loose ends. And that is gonna tell me the current that flows. If you kind of follow the path, it flows out of the battery through the green wire, through my current meter, back through the purple wire, and then through the rest of my circuit, and then back into my batteries. Now my current meter is in the circuit and current's gonna flow through it. So that's not too bad. Now the trickiest part is when you do this using the parallel circuits. Let's go back to our parallel circuit. Let's use our ideas of our series circuit to see if we can measure current through our parallel circuit. So one thing you might want to measure, if you want to measure the current coming out of the battery, you can do that the same way. Unplug this green wire, plug in the purple wire, the two loose ends, you're going to plug in your meter to those two loose ends, you'll measure the total current going into it. But in series, you also wanna measure the current going through each branch, right? Because we have three branches here with three resistors. So the way we do that is we have to unplug one of the resistors. But remember, you're just gonna unplug one end of it. So I'm gonna unplug one end of this resistor. I'm just gonna do that by, I'm going to um, rotate it. So it's like I unplugged it. So I unplug one end of the resistor, come on. And even though it's a resistor, you can still unplug it. It's kind of just like a wire with an extra little piece inside of it. So I unplug the one end of the resistor. I'm gonna plug in my my uh, jumper, my loose jumper wire to the spot I unplugged it from, which is right here. And now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna plug in the two ends of my current meter, maybe, onto those, come on. I don't know why I won't stop jumping there, to there, and the other end into there. And now I'm going to measure current through that branch. So if you trace the path, the um, current's going to come in for the battery. It's going to go through this blue, the blue column, down through this green thing. It's going to split up now. Some's going to go through here. Some's going to go through here. Some is going to go through this first resistor that I disconnected. Then through, oops. Then through my current meter. Then back through my this purple wire. And then out over here, there's green wire, and then back to my battery. So again, one last time, let's do it one more time, because this is, again, this is one that's a little bit confusing with our combined circuit. Get rid of this yellow stuff. If I want to, again, I want to measure the current. I pick what I want to measure the current from. Let's say it's this resistor this time. I disconnect one end. Oh, it looks like it's connected still. But you get the idea, this one's disconnected. Disconnect one end of it. This is just flopping around loose right there now. Plug in a jumper wire to the end, to the spot where I disconnected it from. And then I take my multimeter and I hook it up to those two loose ends. And now I'm measuring the current that was that's flowing through that resistor. All right, that's it for how to build your circuits. Again, I'm gonna link to another video where I show you what this looks like with your real life circuits. And hopefully that will give you a kind of a jump start on uh, making and testing out and measuring current and voltage in your own uh, breadboard circuits.